Welcome back. We'll be on in just a few minutes. All right, so I expect Melinda to do more of the same, play controlled, smart style. She's playing Tanya, who's had a great tournament, obviously. Melinda's got a decent table here, even though it's clustered for a run out, but her angle on this two is kind of tight, so I think she's going to play safe. Probably tuck the two, two rows behind the five, have the cue ball collide into the four. Or that. That works. Tough shot here. I don't know 
how she can get this too. She might be better off just trying to tie a couple balls up. It's just possible hits, but it's really tough. Tanya's never been to the finals of any tournament, especially one this big. Melinda is a seasoned pro, but it's anybody's game. I took my eyes off the table for a second, so I don't know what happened. I just know a cue ball came and is uh, off the table. So Tanya's going to have ball in hand. There's not really a an offensive shot to go for the nine here, so she's going to have to try to go for a run out. Six balls tied up, although it could go in the corner pocket. Tanya's got to be nervous here. I mean, how could she not? Nice straw shot. Wow, nice shot there. Shoots this five and knocked the five out nice. She might have a shot to get out here. Special treat coming into the booth for the finals today. A. A. Ron O'Shaughnessy. Now oh, he dished me. Play with my emotions. It's not coming. Thought he was. He's not. Back to the match. Tanya's got to make this, and this is a huge first win for her. Oh, that's tough. I don't think there's an offensive shot for Melinda here, but she's thankful to be getting back to the table this rack. I mean, to get into a kicking or safety war with someone who is a much lower caliber player than her, I think she's just kind of tapping in. But the, although Tanya did make that killer bank to to get here. Derek Lorcher, Tanya is local. 
She plays in a few leagues. Um, Southern Nevada Nine Ball, a couple of other things. And uh, her and her husband are, are local yokels. She's been in America for 31 years. It's held on to her accent. What's Melinda going to do here? Maybe graze the nine on the right side at about, maybe at about 10 degrees off the, now she's going to play. Yeah, not a bad shot. Good old APA safe. Wow, that was a peculiar shot. I'm not going to lie. Melinda must have thought it through and decided what to do, but that's a peculiar risk to take. Now, obviously, if she hadn't hit the side pocket tip, things could have gone differently, but... So it's one nothing, Tanya Klein. Melinda lost her first game last set, won the next seven. She has to double dip Tanya to win this tournament. Sizing up options here. She could play safe, of course. She could take a flyer on the nine. It actually might go off the four. 
just not a really good run out. She could wait to get to the three to try to figure out what to do with the nine. Tough position to be in. She played safe. She's going to barely contact her elbow. She got one. Not a bad shot. Surprised Tanya hasn't taken off the Yaki rack yet. Tough miss, but she's not going to leave Melinda much to shoot out here. Melinda's calling to watch the hit. I'm not really sure why, because oh, she's calling to get the accu rack removed. I'm surprised Jack doesn't have kind of fancy ball uh, position thing. They make them like the metal thing. You just slide under there. Two chocks works just as well though. So the Acurac is off the table. While Jack's there, I guess he's going to watch a hit. Melinda has every opportunity to come around this two, make the one ball. Shape on the two is going to be tough. She got there. So now that she has an open shot on the three, the four ball is the challenge. She doesn't have an angle to run it out here or break it out here. I'm curious to see what she does here. Smart player. I think I might be inclined to just make this two and let myself see the three and figure out a safety from there. She could play a carom on the nine. It's not a very high percentage shot, but... I like that decision. Let's play safe now. Let's figure out what to do. There's really no point in trying to run out until you can get on the other side of the floor to play an effective safe. I don't think you can play too, maybe, an effective safe on the left side of the floor. But in any case, she played a good safe here. Tanya doesn't have a great opportunity. She can hit this, obviously. The side pocket's in the way on the left. Not really much of a two rail. There's, it's not an easy hit. That side pocket's in the way of things, and 
Well, Linda probably knows Tanya being a 400 player isn't going to have a mastery of English off the rail. She missed. She put the nine in a no, probably a better position because there's no combo available, but not much. So I think if I was Melinda here, I would shoot the two ball down towards the nine to try to develop some sort of a breakout shot on the four. You could shoot it on the opposite side of the seven four to see you have a breakout. That might be the shot. I don't think a four nine combo is available. But I think what I would do is just shoot the two up table, try to freeze her on the six, and she's got the five in the way too. That's what I would try to do. But we'll see what Melinda does. Well, she looks like she's shooting some. She could still be shooting a safe here, or she could be shooting it in. She's shooting it in. She could be thinking about going for a 4-9 carom. I'm sorry, it's not a 4-9 carom. It's a 7, so that's not available. Maybe she'll play safe. Maybe she'll play a one rail. Nice. Well done. As was the last match, 1-1 one, one after Melinda dropped the first game. Tanya's having the time of her life, and she should. It's her first major tournament. Maybe her first tournament she's in the finals of. She's been playing great. She still wants to win, obviously. A lot of money at stake. Big difference in first and second, as there are in most tournaments. Melinda made a ball here. Kind of snookered on. Nah, she can see the one. I don't know what I'm thinking. Most of my guest commentators are drunk at this point. So I'm running solo for now, which is fine. Shot here is most likely to play a little left and come around that second diamond on the left rail, which is what she did. She's a little steep on the two, but it's actually not a bad angle. She's got to come one rail, hit it good, come back for the four. Tough shot, but definitely doable. Nicely done. She's going to hit the eight. Oh, that is a millimeter away from being a great shot. If she had just tapped the eight ever so slightly, she would have been good. As it stands, she's got a tough hit in general. One rail is tough. You can use English to come between 
the nine and the seven, the one rail. There's no shot between the seven and the six, unless you mass a. It's tough. Two rails down below, but tough hit no matter what. Tough break. If she had just tapped any part of that eight, would have been good. She's coming two rails for it. She got a hit. Is she going to get a rail? No. Nice shot. Not sure how she's going to handle this. My guess is she's going to go for a bank. So she had the right idea. Just came up and that's not where she thought it would go. Not too many issues here. Nine ball's kind of in a funky spot, but eight ball might be on the wrong side of the pocket, but Melinda's going to think about this, try to get the run out. She's going to go for the run out. Difference between first and second. First place is nine hundred dollars, five eighty for second. Keep in mind there's a lot of charity money going in. Fifteen dollar side pot, first is one thirty, second is seventy five. Thirty dollar side pot, first is two seventy, first is one sixty. Winner take all, three hundred to Calcutta, about fifteen hundred to nine hundred. So you're looking at a. Uh, about a thousand dollar difference if you're in all the side pots. I'll find out if Tanya's in all the side pots. Both players are in the side pots, so we're looking at about a thousand dollar difference, plus or minus. Lots of money raised for charity today, just in the Q raffle alone. We got twenty five hundred, twenty six hundred. Thanks to Gino for putting that Q in.
Nice shot. Now, this is going to be tough for Tanya. I haven't seen her stroke a ball yet, so she can't do the whole zoop, 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 one, two, three, four rails for the eight. She's probably going to play a stun shot and try to play the eight in the corner as opposed to the side pocket where it lies. She might try to wing it and try to have it come up table, but she just doesn't have enough angle to do anything with this. Now a high caliber player would use all kinds of English and get on the eight and probably play it in the side, but Tanya's a, a 360 line player. I think she's going to just try to make it, leave herself. She might try to see if it'll up a bank. Yeah, so she left herself a bank in the corner. Side pocket that it's lying in <coughs> isn't a great option. Nice try. Valiant effort. But she's going to leave a tough yet manageable shot for Melinda. Las Vegas local Steve Bergman is playing for the hot seat in the Arizona tournament. Can I have a Diet Coke? Or actually, can I get a sugar-free Red Bull and a water, please? Sugar-free Red Bull and a water. And Well done. Steve Bergen. Steve Bergen playing for the hot seat in the Arizona, 625 and under. They got 142 players there. Tough, tough action, tough people. He's playing for the hot seat. That is awesome to hear. Thank you. How much are you? Um, those are $5. There you go. All set. Thanks. Thank you very much. Do you want the straw? Yeah. Okay. So kind of a costly mistake, but it's early on the rack. 
Tanya's not really a run out threat here. People make fun of me, but I'm serious. I would uh I would do a flyer here if I was Tanya. And bank it into that nine ball and get it flying. When you're a low level player and you only have to get to three games, and now you only have to get to two, I'm riding the nine every time. That's me. People might disagree with me. She was trying to set up for the 2-5 combo, but she left herself snooker. Keone, you're mentioning Steve Bergen for $30 in that Calcutta that got $10,000 in it. And he's now guaranteed third place. <laughs> Congrats for him, man. That's awesome. Nice attempt by Tanya. Derek, I don't know who's playing in the finals, but the bracket is posted on the Arizona Pool Players page. Be great to take some Arizona money back to Vegas. Not that we don't love our friends in Arizona, but they've taken plenty of money from us. So that's the first shot we've seen Melissa, Melinda uh, miss in a while. She missed ball in hand. I'm not sure she was worried about the angle in the three or what she was doing. But she left it good. She missed good. The two balls not really that makeable here. <laughs> he uh, was waving for that ball to go in to, through sheer will alone. So a good opportunity. Not a gimme run out here. Just getting on the three alone is going to be tough. You could force follow and come around and hit the eight to go for the three, but I'm not sure Melinda is that reckless. You could just play a stop shot and play the short side. Four balls in a tough position you could hit the two with a little bit of low left draw and try to kick the three into the other pocket which is what she's doing just hit it a little hard i think don't know if she can see the whole thing here Valiant effort left left uh, Tanya snookered. Cody, this is true double elimination. Big thanks to Rum Runner, of course, for hosting this event for the last twelve years. Thank you to Jack Murray for running this event and Rebecca Hendricks for helping. 
Thank you to Southwest Cues or whoever donated that cue. I don't know if it was Southwest or if it was Chino from Run Runner. I guess I should find out before I throw out thanks. Thanks to Southwest anyway, no matter what happens. Ryan Royce is over there playing with his new cue. Ryan, I'll give you a hundred bucks for that right now. No? All right. He, he neglected my generous offer. Declined. He declined my generous offer. So it's kind of a grueling position for Melinda B, and she's got a double dip 7373 three race. But if she stays focused, which she can, she can do it. Tanya's got really nothing to lose here. She's She wasn't supposed to be here. I'm not saying anything negative, but that's just, you know, although she did go pretty high in the Calcutta, so maybe they knew something we didn't. So she can just uh, do what she can, try to win one of these sets, and feel good no matter what about her performance this weekend. Melinda made that look easy. Just got to tap this in, happy Gilmore style, and uh, she can get on this nine. She dogged it. That's a tough miss. Tanya can definitely get out here. I'm not sure if Melinda was worried about floating too, over too much for the eight or if she's just tired and she missed it. And that's a, that's a costly mistake because Tanya can get out here. And I would say it's probably a favorite. She just has to get on this eight. It's pulling out a bridge. Hit it a little hard. Might have to pull that bridge back out. All righty, Melinda got a break on this one for sure. Hard to think Melinda would not be able to get out here, but stranger things have happened in pocket billiards. She actually hit that kind of rough. It, it bounced around a little, but she's good here. I'm sure she's happy to erase the memory of that seven ball miss. So it's 3-1 Melinda. Linda's road to victory came from the one loss bracket. She lost her first match. Who did she lose her first match to?
Yvette. She lost her first match to Yvette three to four, so she avenged that loss. They both had buys. And Yvette went on, whereas Melinda went right to the one loss side. Got to work. She played Gina Worthy, won 7 1. Then she played Rachel McCormick and won 5 1, which is a pretty impressive win because Rachel plays great. She played Nora Perlas and won 7 2, Hill Hill. Then played Felisa Bernard and won 5 2, Hill Hill. Then she played Virginia Ward, Doherty, won 6 2, Hill Hill. And then she went on a tear. She beat Trish Diamond 7 0, Crystal Gallego 7 0. Rebecca Wagner, she beat four to three, which is a more impressive score than it looks like. Just by the way the match went, she really took control and basically shut out Rebecca and made one mistake. And she beat a vet Asagueta seven one, and here she is. Impressive, impressive. Player break real quick. Step off the mic for just one second. <laughs> Get warmer. So, a couple of good breaks have gone Melinda's way here. It's now a 4 2 race for the first set. If she wins, they got to play again. I don't think she'll be chopping if that happens. I don't know if Tanya will offer that or not. Sometimes players do that. My feeling of Melinda and her feeling towards this tournament and pool in general is she ain't chopping anything. That's my thought. Could be wrong. Tell you one thing, I've learned a lot watching this tournament about how I think I'll approach <laughs> matches with when I have to give up a lot of weight. And I'm going to take a lot of cues from Asia Gray and how she played her match. And from this young lady here, Melinda Huang, who has played very smart, good pool, and she's played calculated. The only change I think I make is I'll. Uh, I'm going to take more shots of flyers, but it's a, uh, I've learned a lot because they uh, watching them play and how they've handled knowing that these races are tough is, uh, it's been impressive. I liked how Asia played and, you know, Asia ran into a tough match against Yvette to knock her to lose her side. And then she ran into Rebecca who played perfect. Really. Asia didn't make many mistakes at all. Rebecca just steamrolled her. 
And Melinda has just played great pool. She avenged her only lost. Now she's playing smart. She's not making too many mistakes. She, she got a couple of rolls. She got lucky on a couple things. Part of pool. But I've been impressed with the way she plays. I'm happy to have seen how it's going. And Tanya can still win this, of course. Um, but Melinda's definitely got the momentum. You know, and Tanya hasn't lost a match yet. Um, she's played great, but she's her matches have been closer. They've run, they've come down to rolls. Where Melinda's matches have had a couple rolls involved, but has come down to her just grinding, grinding, grinding. I think almost every match she was in was a seven three or a six four race. Maybe Felisa Bernard was the only one that wasn't. And then, of course, Rebecca. You know, you want to say anything on the screen? Anything that works? I was going to tell you too, but. Yeah. Just saying hi to Gino Hill. I don't really know him that well. He's legendary in town, obviously. Owner of Rum Runner Las Vegas. All these events are his thinking and just has a great bar. It's hard to explain to anybody who's never been here how cool this place is. This 5-9 is the definition of weird, although it might go in. Tanya left this for good. Not easy to make at all. Coming back in. <laughs> Rebecca Wagner is behind me observing. Observing. If you if you want to come back in, let me know. I'll relinquish the boom mic and go back to my other mic. I'm going to get back to South Point. I used to go there and play um, in the mix game they had there. Then it stopped filling up. Is it filling up now? It's we've been running eight sixteen mix. Ooh, ooh. What nights? For sure Thursdays. If that's I work Thursdays, and it's usually on Thursdays. Eight sixteen mix. Are they playing a bunch of like wacky Badugi triple draw stuff? Uh, it usually starts as a smooth, calm horse game. Horse being horse triple draw exactly. Omaha. I'm talking to Rebecca about poker. I'm leaving the mic on because, wow, look at that. She made a foul, and she's going to lose this game. Um, so it starts with the Taurus game, and then people come on. and. Like last week, well, this is the first week. 
days ago. It started as tours, and then by the end they were playing. Um, the end, the oh yeah, I went to a resorts world game and ran into these players, and there was three of us. They had four people at the table, and we said, "What are you guys playing?" And they're like, "Badesi, Triple Draw, whatever." I said, "Cool, so we'll pick our games." So like, "No, you can't pick your games." I'm like, well, you picked yours. Well, this is what we're playing. Cool, we're gonna. Do, it was a, it was a higher limit, like at four eight. We're gonna go play something. Like, if we can't even pick our games, <laughs> you know. And uh, we we told the floor we're like, those guys are jerks. Like they're because if they're only gonna play their wonky games and not net loot and we're fish <laughs> you know like and they're not gonna let the fish so we went to another nice shot by melinda we went to another game they let us pick our games and uh between us we lost i don't know 1200 bucks at like three six you know <laughs> like because we're fish and uh it was just kind of like what's your what's your goal here you want to just sit here and play each other all night and let the casino take the rig pretty no, I've been to that game before. We played on my birthday. Um, we just played a four eight dealer's choice, and I think everybody picked like three games. So Thursday is the is when it really goes for sure. Thursday what what time does it start? I don't know. It's always already run about so like at six. Cool. I'll stop by. You can always check Bravo and see if that interest list is even open. Yeah, that's true. It's on Bravo Poker. At least Omaha goes every day. Yeah. At least three, four, eight, oh, eight games. We played a straight four, eight Omaha high the other week, and that was fun. I'm pulling up a photo to show you, which you'll be amused by because it's funny. Cody, it's at the South Point. It's just a regular old boring crew, but the game. Game so this picture was taken at the win 15 years ago where they were running a mixed game that got totally out of hand <laughs> so you could see that stack took me like three hours to build because it's individually chips whatever and then a poker blog writer took this picture and paid me 20 bucks to knock the stack down <laughs> so it was just all these 30 60 players because i used to be good at poker and um we bought into this game for like a thousand bucks four eight and we're just playing like maniacs it was it was it was so much fun <laughs> so that was like 1600 bucks that was my 17th sam adams <laughs> that's a pretty epic uh, yeah it's pretty cool that's, that that takes a long time to everybody we had like a rail watching the game because people were going crazy and there was a couple of these characters just acting like morons me being one of them so Poker is a perishable ass, a perishable skill though, because I used to be really good. I played for a living, and now I can't play at all. It's not, it's not that your game. It's not that you don't still play the way you played, but the game has changed so that the way you played before is no longer effective. Right. I could win a fifteen thirty or thirty sixty limit game just by reading a couple of David Sklansky books and and folding when I'm supposed to. But now it's evolved so much. There's so much information. There's so much technical knowledge out there. It's like pool. This is why. When I was younger, you had to go to tournaments and read books, and now you can learn almost everything you need to know. Really, everything you need to know on the internet. Watch matches and whatever. They have like sites that, or like coaching sites that will like watch yeah. play and tell you like exactly how you should have played, and they'll tell you the mathematical statistics of it. There's so many coaches, online coaching apps and sites and stuff. It's just um, it's not the same. I'm happy I stopped playing when I did. I play for fun now. I Fully you want to switch places and get on the mic because we're talking. I might as well have you on a mic. Oh, first ball she's missed in like six years. It is. Rebecca Wagner now joining me in the mic. I, I'm forcing her to get on a mic since I we're was already on. No, you weren't on the mic. They could hear me. Kind of. Yeah. Keone, I think they play crazy pineapple up there but i don't know where well he's asking if anybody plays crazy pineapple that's one of those in my birthday games. game it was one of the games at the end but for the most part it's too close to hold them so people who don't want to play hold them don't want to play crazy pineapple i love drama and archie 
Yeah, we had that in our mix. I still have not yet won a hand of Archie in my life. Yeah, it's interesting you say how I think I've just gotten worse because I don't play as much anymore. It's not. But it's not you. People have well, gotten better. People have gotten better. I, I did, my patience level has decreased because I just don't care anymore. So the two of those things put together. Mm -hmm. This one ball is the first ball I've seen Melinda out and out just miss in a long time. She's been playing great. She missed a tough, um, not a tough, she missed a straight in seven ball. And, but she got lucky and Tanya yeah, didn't. That's in this situation as well. She, uh, well, that's unfortunate. The gang ball in hand is, well, the two is a mess. and Actually, it looks like the two goes on the side, but now the three is also a mess. So, What time is it? Seven? I don't have time to be stupid and go to putters and play in their eight ball tournament. I don't have my cues anyway. They have an eight ball tournament at eight. Eight at eight on Sundays. Ten bucks. I don't know when anything is anymore because I'm supposed to be at work. 59 minutes ago. What did you just say? I'm not going in? I gave away my shifts yesterday and today. I guess I could have made it today. I was, But that means sober Rebecca had to play pool, which is totally not happening. No, well, I'm pretty sure not sober Constantine is going to play in the Dock Hill, but we'll see how I feel. It'll be fun. Yeah, we'll see how much I have to blow in the Calcutta and I'll decide whether or not to get how much you're gonna be, I remember a long time ago. Um, who was it? I was up here. Was it Ryan, Ryan DeBerg and Jason Osborne? It was like when all of them could still play in the dock. And I think, oh, and Alan Cox. We stayed up here drinking till like 8 or 9 a.m. And I was like, didn't you? Weren't you the number one blind bid in the Calcutta? I'm sure your buyers would be thrilled with you. I think that was Alan. I think that was Alan. Did you hear about what happened with Nino at the Mako? No. So Nino de Guzman, who we all love, got into the Mako somehow. I don't know if someone bought him in, any of your backers, but he ended up going in a bidding war in the Calcutta. So he went for $1,000, right? And that's fifteen grand and the sixteen grand in the Calcutta. So he was the second highest after this guy Tony Roberto, who used to be a Tony pro. Roberto. Yeah, played in our Mako. Yeah, a lot of people weren't happy about that. Are you serious? Yeah. So he plays freaking ridiculous. He, he maybe well. used to, but he 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 played well. So Nino and Tony draw each other <laughs> the first match, and Nino is not there when the match starts. So people try calling him, whatever. Someone gets in touch with him. And I'd even mentioned to him the night before, don't forget you have a tournament tomorrow because it was his birthday at Q Club. So I guess they got in touch with him. He thought it was at 11. He gets there and MOB makes a decision that he's going to lose a game every 10 minutes or something. And then if he's 30 minutes late, that's it. He strolls in... 30 seconds before he's DQ'd. Uh, DQ'd, he's got three games already down, borrows a cue from another player, and starts playing lights out, <laughs> and almost beats Tony Roberto, but ended up losing, and those three games were the factor. He lost 9-7, and uh, it was just like, his buyer was not happy, and I was like, well, I'm going to start a Calcutta service where you can message me, and I'll tell you that's that's not uncommon for Nino to do something like that. And I love Nino, but it's just kind of like, that's his deal. Yes. Jeff Gray told me a story about when he went behind the Calcutta and he ended up staying up all night. Like, I think it might have been when he could play in the Dock Hill. And he, he was just like, I'm just going to stay up all night. But he didn't do well. I'm not sure what... Melinda was trying to do on the safety there. Can't tell. But she was just trying to thin it and kind of leave it separated. That this looks like you make it and then you titty off the side for like perfect shape. Oh, almost. Wow. <laughs> 
Not the worst case scenario. Not by all means. It looks like, though, if you try to hit this natural high, just to pocket it all the way down, it looks like your cue ball naturally wants to come across and scratch cross side. If you just try to go high. Tanya is talking to herself. Pretty normal thing to do. Well, she's never been on a stage this big. Yeah. You know, and it's uh, got to be a lot of pressure on her. Melinda's been on stage like this before. Also, I don't think that she realizes she's left her table length straight in. Like, wrong side of the ball. Hard to get back for the six. Maybe she's not. It looks like it from here. Like it's straight. Okay, I'm crazy. You're crazy, man. Well, I also always forget what a Revo can do. You're talking about carbon fiber. I talk about it on streams a lot. I switched to a Q-Tex Energy for eight months and learned how to play it. And actually won a couple decent tournaments, whatever. But it just didn't feel natural. So I went back to a Maple Shaft, which I can't do the same things with it. But it's more natural and i can do other things like control the cue ball mass a better you know get a feel yeah. for the shot the people who are comfortable with it they can do some things that it's like almost i don't want to say it's not fair because obviously everyone has the opportunity to use that but it it wouldn't benefit me to try i mean i have tried just about everything it's just well you, you can a... kill you can kill a cue ball in a way that you can't you can put unnatural amounts of spin with little effort right um but my ball runs probably dropped four balls when I when I switched over to a low deflection shaft. I just couldn't control the cue ball with the carbon fiber. And I have a Sean low deflection shaft, which I shoot better with. But with the carbon fiber, I just was overrunning everything. You have a powerful stroke, and, I, you know, I do too. And I just I couldn't control it, so I switched. But it's different for everybody. This is the comedy hour. I hope everyone heard. That Constantine said, I have a powerful stroke. I do. I do. Well, I put my weight into it. I it's wish a... I knew how to do that. <laughs> my break would be immensely better if I could put my ass into it. Got a lot of one and not the other. You use that for balance. I see you shimmying before you shoot. I line up funny. It's funny. Someone asked me, you could do one thing to make your pool game better. I was like, it's easy. I'll lose a hundred pounds. I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, getting around. <laughs> I'd have more stamina. That's when I started playing badly, actually, is when I lost a lot of weight. Hmm. Everything felt wrong. You go for a... I think you just kind of go for a safety... It's hard because those balls are so close They're together. so close. I, I mean, it almost looks like... It kisses, it caroms naturally off the side of the nine straight into the pocket. All she's got to do is shoot like that ahead. It's going to kiss just the little lip edge of the nine and go straight in. But I can be crazy. You know, once you get down there, it's a totally different perspective. So. Cody DeVito, um, we run like some simple 2-4 house games where we play all the silly games. I'll put you on the list. If you play like a complete moron, you can lose two or three hundred bucks. It's a lot of fun. One okay. of my rich friends hosts it, so there's lots of whiskey and food it looks involved. Looks like you could just thin thin the eight, and then and then just cue ball. I would say the other way, like thin the ed left edge of the eight, and it kind of dies on the nine. You can run the cue ball all the way around the table, or you could just thin it and leave it on the headrail right there. She's definitely thinking about it long and hard, which is understandable. Sometimes you just have to consider your opponent. Leave her close is fine. Can you... This is a... I'm not saying that Melinda's taking too long, but... Can you call the clock on your opponent like you can in poker? 
Uh, yes and no, but in, in full it's super stupid because, like, they observe and, like, take it a while to verify that it's necessary, and then they warn you, and then it just depends on, like, what, what who's the authority in the situation. Right. But it's never going to just be like, okay, this shot, now all of a sudden you have a shot clock. Right. The clock has been so, called, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Not I like wish. poker where it's I 60 wish. seconds. This is kind of what I was saying to do from the beginning. So let's just spin it. Like, you could just leave it right there. Right there. You could hit it hard, but you could just spin it and leave it right there at the headrail. Yeah, because if you do that, it's going to come out. Just fine. It's a lot of pressure for Tanya. It's an opportunity, but... A lot of pressure. It's a tough shot. Yeah, it's table length. The distance starts looking long when you're nervous. Is this an acoustic version of the Pat Benatar song, We Are Strong? I didn't even know she made this. I don't think it's her. I think it's a remake. Oh, good call. Yeah, she she hit that with a little draw to slow it down, but it, I think it curved her cue ball. That's what it looked like to me. In either case... Melinda's got a great opportunity here. Is a decision. Do you hit a third the ball and bank it up to the headrail? Or do you cut it all the way down? She's going for it. Well, I didn't want to say she made it as it was going down because it was heading towards the long rail, but she got it in there. Now she's got a little bit of a tester, but she should make this. Slow down. Take your time. So she's two games away. From having to beat her again, and I don't think she's gonna chop if she they get to that point. Not, not by I've her. never seen this event get chopped. Ever. You've never seen this tournament get chopped. Never. Have you ever requested a chop in the finals of a tournament? Cool. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. Like the the like a weekly something like a putter yeah. or something like that at one o'clock in the morning. Yes. Um. I remember one time at Q Club a long time ago, they uh, we got to the it's a ball not ball a uh, game handicap tournament, and it was supposed to be Gary Anamora and I to play the finals, and I think it was like a 10, 10 six race, and he's supposed to beat my bottom sore with that, and he goes, "Do you want to chop?" And I'm like, do you want to play for all of it? He got mad. <laughs> he got furious. I was just like, why would you be mad? I'm giving it away. You know, I'm like, all right, that's fine. We can chop. If you don't want to play for all of it, we'll just chop. <laughs> These fools don't believe me that if I get to the finals of the Doc Hill, I'm going to ask. I'm gonna, but, and I forget who I was talking to, but saying there's no way someone will say yes. I'm like, you never know. You never know. And then I'll be a hero or a goat. I think it's a mistake for Tanya. Yeah, she's at the advantage. As, for... as the lower-ranked player, you're supposed to attempt to shit that ball in and yeah. it's part of my language. That's all right. You're supposed to try to make that ball in all means possible. Because this is interesting, too. Now that there's a ball already in the way, like, you know, like in one pocket, when you spot something up, you might wire a ball on accident, and then, then what? This fly has been here. I call it the, yeah. mas the, t the table mascot. He's been hanging out for the last few hours. I think I'm going to give one pocket another shot, much to the joy of the entire Las Vegas gambling community. But I'm going to um, I'm going to learn some things first, I hope. We'll see. But I'm going to give another shot. It's a pay-as-you-go kind of game. Well, I paid a lot last year. So oh. now I'm going to... Pay less per game to learn the same amount. Yeah. I think I'm missing a couple of basic strategy points that I'm... So I'm going to get a couple of people to take some lessons, try to learn about it, and hopefully come back and do better. I mean, I don't have to take lessons to beat 
Cody in one pocket because he's challenging me, but I'd like <laughs> shots fired, Cody DeVito. I know he plays pretty good. I mean, he beat he beat the Rhino. Well, that's a huge accomplishment. Wow, smack talking has started. I have an interesting stat with one pocket because I'm going to remove. I've one game I played Eric Kinzer <laughs> from the equation because we weren't really playing. I've never won money playing one pocket, not once. I have. You have. I have. Um, I've. I'm an amazing one pocket player. I can count on my. I think I probably need at least one foot at this point, but <laughs> between my hands and one foot, I can count all the games I've ever played. Yeah. Jeez and peas. And you've won more money than I have. <laughs> nice shot. Oh my God. What the earth is that? <laughs> that's a sandwich? That looks like an animal that's been cooked and put on a plate. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, I'm going to take a time out and uh, time out from Rebecca. Three people to share this with. Oh, exciting. What is that? So, in case anybody's wondering what just caused the ire of the booth, the hot roast beef sandwich that they brought over looked like somebody cut a cow in half, cooked it, and put it on a plate. Like, it's huge. Everybody heard it here. Cody DeVito is going to give Constantine Alexander 9-7 in one pocket. You heard it here first. The sad part is, I'm not sure I can win that game, but I'll try. I am that bad. Oh, she did not want to tap that four like she did, so she left a window for the two. Not a great window, but a window nonetheless. I'm going to take a quick break from the mic. I'll be back in two minutes. That being said, I've still never won by one pocket, but I'm also playing like world beaters, you know, so. So it's a 2 2 race. If I'm Tanya, I'm no doubt whatsoever taking a swing at this nine. She can't run out this rack. This is a tough run out for a high level player to negotiate. So you've got to take a swing at this nine.
I'm not sure why she didn't go for the 2-9 if she didn't see it, but she elected not to. Now Melinda has a tough job ahead of her. This three can be made. Getting on the four, not so easy. The angle's right for her to maybe try to kick the five into it. She could maybe hold the th the cue ball off the three, but the four doesn't go in the in the right side pocket. And yeah, that's that's a tough shot to pull off. It was a good attempt, but I'm, I think I would have played safe there. I just just very low percentage shot, but. she had made it, she would have been the hero. From here, I mean, she could try kicking at it, obviously. She hits it soft. The four ball, I don't know if she can try to make. The eight doesn't go with a combo. I think I'd probably go long rail and try to leave the four. That's a pretty effective shot she just did there. That's a great shot. Big thanks to Rum Runner, of course, for hosting this event. Benefiting the Helen J. Stewart School for the Mentally and Physically Challenged Children. 12th Annual Western Women's Charity Nine Ball Challenge. Tanya Klein getting ready to shoot against Melinda Wong. This is the first set of the finals. If Melinda wins, they play again. If Tanya wins... She's the winner. Sorry about that, everybody. The internet dropped. I caught it in time to keep the stream going, and I'm on my hotspot now, and there I shall stay um, to make sure that doesn't happen again. Painful. What happened? I ate almost all of it. <laughs> almost. Looked good. Welcome back to the booth, Rebecca Wagner. All right, caution to the wind. Cross that. Let's go. Hard enough to come around. Three rails. That's what I say. Yeah, right? No. Stop being smarter than us, Melinda. That's a good shot. Jump cues are allowed here, but I haven't seen Tanya jump. And I you actually, Rebecca, are the only person this entire tournament that I've seen do a jump. And I did not execute it. You butchered but, it. But it, earlier, it was like I a scene from the Titanic. I did jump and run out of my first match. So, but I wouldn't jump like something like this because of the amount of oomph you need to clear the nine to yeah. do the distance. You're likely to fly the cue ball or the five ball off the table. So. Agreed, but just thought I would mention. I mean, unless you're like Dennis Arcolo and you know how to like make it fly imaginably crazy style and also land soft as a butterfly, which I don't know how he does that. 
We just go straight up and down like fluffy. Fluffy. Yeah, Cray, this is no, a very close the first set. Attempt. Man, my phone company is mad at me. I've had to switch the hotspot a lot. I'm starting to get my messages. Do you know how much bandwidth you're using? Yep. Like that's why I have unlimited data. I do too, but it'll start slowing down after a certain moment time. I have unlimited because I have my sister and my mom. I have them on my plan, and my sister loves watching videos at work, and she can't use. Well, she can now. But why is it buffering? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, sis. She's actually got Wi-Fi now. She used to work for Homeland Security in Georgia. And they didn't have Wi-Fi that was available to because uh, it was ridiculous. I get it; it's Homeland Security. But now she works in police um, department in Colorado, and they have Wi-Fi. So now I'm the problem for unlimited plan. So I'm assuming the seven doesn't go, and she was playing for the seven to get the correct angle to make it more natural to shoot the seven nine combo. <laughs> And then the seven goes towards the right, and the so oh, it goes okay. Um, I was confused, confused. Yeah, I couldn't tell. I thought the seven didn't go past the nine. Oh, great! Ray, Ray Man is here. He would love a, to come. What a treat! I'm sure. I don't think he's allowed to. They have a ban nationwide against Rayman jumping on a mic anywhere. As long as he admits that he's the biggest sandbagger alive. Oh my. I don't know. Mike Moyer was here earlier. <laughs> so, it's a. Uh, o M G. Did she? Miss Q. Did she make a legal hit? She kind of scoopied the cue ball instead of draw the cue ball. But she did make a legal hit on the eight, right? Correct. Yeah. Rayman's close, but I think Moyer's got him licked. Mm. I'm unfamiliar with his game, so. Plays I mean, I know good. who he is, but I don't know how he plays. He's but... a nice guy. He's actually getting more. His Fargo's starting to go up a little. I have seen him dog balls, but he's a smart player. Tanya needs to feel committed there. Because the cue ball is going away from the line she wants. No sense in making the eight if you're not going to make the nine. No, and she's a pretty significant dog to make this, but I would have said that about the crazy nine ball bank she made against um, Yvette. Yvette, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Drilled it like it had eyes. Just hit it like you mean it. What's out? Don't, don't pussyfoot it, as they say. Well, yeah. Uh, don't pussyfoot it. Fire nice no. Try. Mm -hmm. I've been told that phone companies call it throttling, whatever that is, J.R. Cole. Throttling. Melinda Wong on the hill. All right, roast beef sandwich, nap time. I. Nice break, although a little dry, but she's there's problems here. Two ball tied up. Could be a long rack.
Nice shot. Ooh. You know what I think is going to happen here, and I think she does too. So she made a carom on the seven, no, six ball, and lined up a one nine. Not a high percentage combo, but definitely one she's going to go for. Wow, that's the game of nine ball for you. So we are on Hill Hill. And that's what you have to do as a lower handicap player. You have to go for things, and sometimes they'll go in. That's the nature of nine ball. If you're playing a lower handicap player in a cash game, make sure that you play call the nine. <laughs> but we're not playing call the nine. Tanya's not happy with it, but she's taking it. You know, a win's a win. Nobody's happy to win like that, but... Nothing Melinda can do except for, I mean, she broke well, ball spread well. She just didn't make the ball, and then Tanya capitalized. That's all there is to it. The rolls of the game. Hill Hill, Tanya Klein, breaking in the finals of the 2022 Western Women's Nine Ball Challenge. For anybody who's following our local favorite, Steve Bergen has gotten to the hot seat match playing Lee Brown in the Arizona Southwest Championship Bull Shorters Tour Stop. 142 players. He went for 30 bucks in the Calcutta, which is insane. Maybe just nobody knew him down there. I couldn't bid on him because they were only taking cash. I probably should have contacted somebody. My bad. Melinda Wong. Yoni, congratulations on that buy. Where she could do is third place. There's ten grand in that Calcutta. So that's a nice hit for you. Nice hit for Bergen too. Hopefully he does well. But he could win it, obviously. 6-2, correct, Yen. Sorry, I forgot. Hill Hill. So I think you hit the 3 into the 7, and then you have the cue ball slide over to the 6, and you play safe. I think that's the shot. Let's see what she does. No, that'll work, I guess. She's got to hit a rail, though. She did. <laughs> K 
Jeff Gray, uh, I'll issue you a refund on the stream personally whenever I see you next. It'll probably be in the form of a Bud Light. Thanks for the kind words, Xtina. So Hill Hill, Melinda's got to get to the center of the table for that four ball, and she should be in pretty good, pretty good position, pretty good shape to get out on this rack, force a second set. Jeff Curry, we have a full time person handling complaints that you can send to the website. They'll uh, make sure to get back to you soon. So any gripes, complaints, creative, constructive, constructive criticism, just go ahead and send it to papacycomplaints.com. <laughs> yes, Jeff. I hired ri the rhino. <laughs> so she's been thinking about the shot for a while. Obviously, she wanted to be around the center of the table. It's Hill Hill. I'm allowed to think about it. I mean, I think I'd play it off the six. I think the angle's there for that. Kind of a risky shot, but... Well done. I guess she was trying to figure out how to stay on the five, which she has. Kind of left herself a little tough, but nothing crazy. So from here, if you play a stun draw or a stun shot, got to watch out for the side pocket, but if she can get on that six with a little bit of angle, preferably for the seven, but she doesn't really even need to. If she's straight in, she could play a stop shot on the six, leave herself a little tough, but a makeable shot. On the seven. She's thinking hard about it. She's being calculating. Important rack, obviously. If she wins, we go to another set. If she loses, we go home. She played it in the side, which is... Every player is different, but she played it short. So now she's got a little bit of a tester. Simple draw, one rail. She could go three rails back for the seven if she wanted. She's got a little bit of an angle here that might actually be a better shot. If she draws, she could rocket it right into the pocket. That was a precarious shot, but it worked out more. Nothing gets easier. She's got a little bit of an angle here. It's not a great angle to shift over to the right for the nine ball. She's got to play a firm stop shot, which is what she's doing, because if she played follow, she would probably run into the nine. She hit a good 
Nice shot. Small tester, but she's been making these all night. This isn't really a tester. I hope I didn't jinx her. Good shot. Just getting close to the pocket to keep the crowd involved. So we're going to another set. We're going to a player break. We'll be right back. Be back in a few.
Welcome back. I got caught in conversation, so I didn't see what happened here. But it looks like Melinda's doing well so far. Nice shot. It's going to come around. Not necessarily. Yeah, perfect, actually. Nice out. I didn't see the first part of the rack. I had... I got caught in conversation. I don't know what happened, but nice shots I did see. So Tanya won the flip, broke, made a ball or two, and then Melinda ran out. Thank you, Mark Smith, if that is who you really are. Melinda's well, got the control break down pretty well. She's been breaking efficiently. She broke dry a couple times. As somebody mentioned, I think Jeff did, she's got the nine ball coming towards the bottom right pocket, the opposite pocket pretty well. Not that wreck. She made a ball. She's straight in on the one. She's been running out. So for anybody who's never been a rum runner, they rope off table one and two for any major tournaments for the Western Women's, the Dock, the Mercer. So it's a really good for spectators. There's lots of places for people to sit. Uh-oh, Rebecca Hendricks is coming into the booth. She says she's not going to get on the mic. She might not consciously get on the mic, but she's going to be on the mic. I'm going to cut the mic for a second to get things set up. Welcome back to the mic, Rebecca Hendricks. Have to move this closer to me. No, just start talking. About four to six inches. Hey, everybody. I'll adjust the mic wherever you decide to talk. I bought that mic for Jack. Did I'm it serious. work okay? It worked perfect. Good. Because when Jack was unteachable to talk into a mic. That's Jack. So I just let That's him accurate. sit there and I moved the mic to him. So what do you think about the finals so far? I think Melinda's been playing smart pool the entire time I've seen her play. She got lucky on a couple things, but roles are part of pool. She's playing smart. She's playing great. She's playing very deliberate. We had to... Uh tell both players to pick up the pace a little bit and well she's taking her time but 
how do you tell him to pick up the pace? Do you put him on a shot clock or you just suggest well, it? Well, he, he brought them both aside, or Jack, he, Jack brought them both aside and just said, you know, with this final set, they need to pick up the pace or else we're going to have to do a shot clock of 45 seconds a shot. So we'll see what goes on there. Do you think that's for both players or that's really just more for Melinda? Because I don't think Tanya's taking a long time. No, but this is, I'll get in trouble for saying this, but out of fairness, just that's how Jack preferred to handle yeah, of course. this. It's just to, to tell both players, and then if it becomes an issue, then he'll address whichever player is the issue. So so for anybody who doesn't know, in Las Vegas, this scenario is called the Asia Rule. <laughs> oh, my goodness. She's going to hate me one of these days. I didn't say you, you that. coined no, that. but I know. You said you coined it. I did. <laughs> the Asia rule. She she'd probably admit that that was sometimes the case anyway. So, look, Melinda's. I, I brought this up when Rebecca was in the booth. I'm like, is there a point where you, as the opponent, can call a clock? Because Melinda's definitely being deliberate. But on some shots, it was it was a really it was long time. it was a little while. So what what happened is a spectator came over and said something to Jack and Jack is much more diplomatic than I am at times. So he, he, you know, talked to the gentleman and then the gentleman walked away acting like there wasn't going to be any kind of resolution. And I caught him and just said, you know, basically you're not a player. It's, it's one thing for a player to come say something to us. It's another for the spectator too. So, so how did Tanya's husband handle things? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> he's know. fine. He's he's fine. He's Ta such a nice guy. He he really is. He's just. I mean, he's he's got a lot invested in this. So yeah. you know, and I understand that. So it's I mean, a fair. It, it's a fair grade. It too. is, and I think he understood too. I mean, he's he says, well, ta you know, that that Tanya's not that way, but well, then we're not going to go off of what well, again what a spectator says. So. I brought it up without any spectators involved in the booth that it seemed like something needed to be said. I personally don't care as much if people take their time because I can take my time too. Right. But I'm also a different level player that's dealt with a lot of the situations before. Well, uh, and I think too the way... So, so say it's the middle of a match. Say it's right in the middle of a match and... A spectator whether it's one of the player's husbands whatever comes up and say something then is it fair for the tournament director to stop play based on what an observer says that's one thing versus a player coming over and saying hey my opponent's taking too long i think if a spectator mentions it to the tournament director and the tournament director feels like it's a valid complaint then the tournament director can make the decision but i also agree that the, the player should say something, right. not a spectator. But I understand why someone would, and uh, especially if you got someone in a Calcutta, or whatever. And, but like I said, we were talking about it before. She's definitely taking a little bit of time, and the right thing to do is Steve Bradley. I'll call what I want to call. Thanks for watching. Shout out to you. <laughs> we're talking about a rule that's part of the game um so i think it's definitely a proper for them to say that but melinda's taking her time it's an important match and uh yeah it is both both players are in all side pots i'm sure you've already mentioned that so this this final um this final set does make a big difference i mean the winner I mean, she's playing basically perfect pool right now and she's she has picked up the pace a little bit she's she taking a long time she has. and i don't think she did it deliberately she just she's thinking hard a pretty nice easy shot. cut on the nine there And Melinda goes up to nothing. We had a team 
get put on a shop clock at BCAs, and they were just taking an insane amount of time. And I think somebody put Asia on the shot clock at BCAs too. Oh, did they? Yeah, because she was just taking all the time in the world. Right. I mean, I've been guilty of taking a long time, just especially in a long, well, I haven't really lasted long in a tournament like this, but, um, you know, just you get fatigued throughout the day too. And Melinda's, she's really, I think she's had the longest road, obviously, to get here to the finals. We had to almost put a player on a shot clock in one of my tournaments we ran in December or before. I think it was in October. And I just went up to him just like Jack did. But I, I said it before anybody else got involved. I said, look, you're, you're three brackets behind. Right. And uh, you need to pick up the pace or I'm going to put you on a shot clock. And they were super nice and it's a player I know. But that was, that was me, not a spectator, right. getting involved. It's a pretty decent break for Melinda. She dropped two. Looks like the two's an easy cut in the side. How do you think she's going to get back on the four? She is now in a tough position because the eight's kind of in the way of a couple things, but she can. She's looking to go around it. I'm not sure I would try to get back on the four for a makeable shot. I might try to get a look at the four to play safe because there's not many places you can go and thread the needle to make the four. I think you're right. She's going to, unless she tries to bank it, she's probably going to play safe. And I love when people comment and try to change the way I do a stream. Just turn off the commentary <laughs> or go away. <laughs> Those are your options. Like, it's like, if you don't like the commentary, turn it off. Simple. It's the simplest equation in life. <laughs> So she's going to play safe here. <laughs> I think if you pay for it, then, you know, then That's you have one a, thing. Yes. now you're a paid service, but <laughs> <laughs> I ain't getting paid for this. <laughs> oh, that's not entirely true it's not entirely true I mean, i'm saying i'm not getting paid by the people no watching. no no no, no, no. <laughs> i'm this not is charging not, this is, a subscription <laughs> this free. is not a pay-per-view stream yeah that's just funny i just laugh when someone starts telling me oh. how to do what i do and tanya took a swing at it at least and she opened up the table with that too so so Extina brings up a point. She says, Melinda, play her game and don't think people with special interests should have a say. And there's a case to be made for that. I'm not talking about you, Extina, by the way. I mean, I kind of, I kind of agree. That's I, I feel like the, the, the players playing are the ones that should be involved. And I mean, we had a situation at the... Sam Lynch now when there was a question of someone in the crowd yelled out a foul. It was this big mess. I think, I don't know if you remember it, but $20,000 difference in first and second. And one player didn't see the foul. We're not allowed to say anything as commentators. Right. And someone from the crowd yelled out. So it's it's tough. But I tend to agree with you, Christina. You know, But what I think if... once it gets brought up, again, the director can say, well... It's valid because because right. Jack could have just said, "Well, it's not a valid complaint." He could have. He could have. And but it's like I said, to I kind of close in, the issue. So, in, in fairness to Jack, the Tanya did come up afterwards. Oh, so well, it was it yeah. wasn't his his addressing the players was not based on well, the spectator. 
there's a new piece of information yes. there. If yes. Tanya came up and complained, she did. and she has a valid complaint because Melinda yes. was taking a long time. So, so yeah, I don't want to give the impression that Jack talked to the players based on what the spectator said. It was it was based on a player coming up. Cool. Well, problem's been resolved. Well, let's move on. Melinda's playing great pool. She is playing a little faster. This nine ball's in her way. She might try to draw and avoid it and play the eight in the side. She made a great shot on the four, though. Hit it a little hard, but... I think that might work out nicely for her, though. I don't know. This is a tough shot to get on the nine. I guess you just kind of float this. Oh, she's going to play a follow. No, wow, that was risky. Ooh. A good shot. Nice shot. Looks like Cody wants to send you a donation. <laughs> I saw that, but I'm not responding to it. <laughs> Cody, your donation could be to play me 9-7 in one pocket. Well, um, <laughs> if he sends you a donation, does that mean he gets to tell you how to run your commentary? <laughs> Thanks, Tina. I appreciate everything you're saying. I wasn't talking about you. Please continue to contribute to the chat. And uh, we're, we're not pulling for either player here, but so far it's been a good match, and Melinda's playing great. Jeff Gray said husbands should be involved in all at all <laughs> <laughs> jeff gray jeff needs gray. to learn how to butt out <laughs> <laughs> he said no matter he's like no matter what happens i'm not posting about it <laughs> so melinda's on a roll here well done she is I, I don't know that the uh the asking her to pick up the pace is going to um, it's going in the favor in. of anybody right besides herself i don't okay. think i've seen tanya really shooting much at all I mean, she's kind of. She been... broke the first the first game, and I feel like she's maybe had one or two shots since then. I could be wrong though. Um, now Melinda did drop the one and two, and didn't really leave a good shot for herself on the three. Did she push? I didn't notice. I need uh, to. She grab... must have pushed because. What do you need? I'm just going to grab a charger from my phone because I'm using my hotspot right now because Is internet. Safe? That's not mine, but I'm. Uh, so someone left this last yesterday, night. Yeah. yeah. That's not an iPhone charger. It uh -huh. looks like it's all shredded. I would just throw it away. Okay. But I'm going to cut my mic and just grab a charger because I'm tethering my phone and it's draining it. Oh, that sucks. That's why I have unlimited internet. According to Mark Smith, that is your name. She pushed. You know who Mark Smith is, right? Mark Smith's a friend. Oh. Cody DeVito up in the game. You're right. Maybe I need 10-7, Cody. Actually, <laughs> you probably do. <laughs> I'm bad at one pocket. Can you plug this into this one, please? Yeah. Thank you. Here. Just so I have one of those. Right. 
It's a decent try for Tanya, but she's given Melinda ball in hand here on the three. Well, depending on how she gets to the five, I think it's a fairly decent table for a run. I'll tell you off mic. Oh. I don't want to blow his cover. <laughs> <laughs> he probably doesn't even want me talking about it. So, Christina Gonzalez, I'm assuming you're not playing in this because you're still out of town. Are you coming back at any point? Like in the near future? It's another safe for Melinda. I'll tell you what. As much as Christina gives me a hard time. She was in the booth once, one of our I forget which tournament it was, but we had a we had a blast. I'm not sure anybody listening cared for it, but but we had a blast. <laughs> I always feel that way when I get in the booth with you. I'm like, oh it's a bunch of people just hit the mute button. Yeah, it's fine. Whatever. Yeah. Sorry you don't like the free stream. <laughs> At least as long as we have fun. <laughs> oh. There are things I care about in life and things I don't. But Christina and I, we had a we had a blast, and people were like commenting. It was it was awesome. Christina Gonzalez is a wealth of knowledge. She started talking about pool and some stories and stuff like that, and and uh, we had a great time. She's amazing. Oh, well, she's got quite a few stories of the the Vegas pool scene. So she actually gave me a compliment when we when we were, which is like I mean, she, she must have been painful or for her to do like. I, I don't know. Maybe she just, I don't know. She gave me a compliment. So Jack said you guys are pretty well committed to the BCAs, right? Like you're we playing are. a lot of we stuff. Are. Yeah. We are. Is that Ozzy Reynolds in here yesterday? Yeah, okay. Ozzy stopped in with um, a gentleman from England who. Mar I, Steve White or something? Mark White. Mark, Mark White. White who's been here, um, came over to help commentate, I forget which event, um, that a Jeremy Jones had gotten gotten sick and wasn't able to, so Mark White came over and helped commentate, so Ozzy stopped by with gotcha. him and his son. Melinda's got a good angle here to just play one rail and leave it on the eight. She can either leave it straight in or a little angle, she'll be fine. She just has to make sure she doesn't overrun the eight. If she plays it with just kind of stun shot, I probably would. She's looking to go two rails with it, which is an odd. This, well, oh, she's doing the whole 30 degree roll. What happens if I follow? I think she should draw one rail down and avoid the corner, but I'm not in her position. I'm not looking at the shot as closely as she is. She's hitting it with draw, so yeah, she should. But she hit it too hard. Yeah. Not the end of the world. Against players like Tanya, you just need to avoid. You need to avoid hanging balls. So. Although if, in this shot, if she does hang it, the nine could get in the way, whatever. Right. I'm just Tanya's, saying it's... Tanya shot really well this weekend, though. I mean, she, she shot great. She has shot really well. Um, I think she went pretty deep in the last women, she Western said she got too. So, fifth. Yeah. The only reason I'm bringing up about hanging balls is you can't dismiss the idea of playing safe right, correct. behind the nine here. Because this is a tough shot. 
I've heard from quite a few of the, the higher players in this event that one of their main that they've changed the this this event with the races they've changed how they approach when they're playing the lower player that only has to go to three and it's making sure that the nine ball is not near a pocket and then spreading out the object balls whether that means put the two on one rail and the three up on the other gotcha, other rail yeah. whatever it is because the chances of some of the lower players running out is so slim that whatever they can do to make it more difficult for them Oh, she she almost pad. clipped off the nine. Ooh. This is a disaster scenario for her. Because she's left Tanya a run out she can accomplish. I don't want to say easy, but barely. Yeah, she hit that good. Nice draw. She's got to just... Tapping in with follow, and she there's no real scratch or no anything. Scratch there. Well, if she draws, I mean, if she plays a stop shot hard, she could scratch. But if she follows it, there's no scratch, unless she hits it really hard. Arlene Wasserman Bales, much love. I appreciate you keeping me in check with the scores <laughs> and my spelling, and I appreciate you being on. I I think it's great. We have a good time here. I enjoy doing this, and I appreciate you shouting out So that out nine for ball it. puts Tanya on the on the board. Three one to Melinda. Not the end of the world, but no. Melinda obviously, and I think she was thinking about that shot and everything that could happen, and she was confident she took the right shot. And sometimes you just miss, but that was a really tough shot. Christina said she'll be back for the BCAs. That's awesome. I'm only doing two events at BCAs, but it's going to be fun. Can you be like a scab player at BCA and just be available for teams that <laughs> that, Who, that lose? No, me. Oh. <laughs> like if I'm just like, I'll be a scab. You know, I, always, I don't know the answer to that because I don't know if you can, when the last time you can do substitutions is. Um, I, I know it's I asked. the day before. I know I asked jack last year because i had a i ended up having a work conflict and i asked if he could replace me and he immediately said no it was too late and then went and asked anyway and it was indeed too late so so nothing on the break for tanja Oh, she almost got behind the three, but Tanya has got, I mean, not a really viable shot. She could try to bank it. It goes. She could play safe. Probably the wise thing to do here. She could take a flyer at the nine, which is what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> and I would play safe. <laughs> it looks like she's going to play safe. Christina, who knows a lot about BCA, said you can be at it if they have room and you're qualified. So maybe I'll be a scab player because I'm going to be there for the singles events, but I, I don't want to commit to a team. And so then when did pull she say out. you can? Your cup's in my way. I can't like read the comments. I'm sure that's on purpose. Thank you. It is not on purpose. She said if you're qualified. Oh, I don't know. She deleted her comment, or I don't know where it went. So it looks like Tanya did indeed hook Melinda. Which way would you go to get to the one ball here? She said you're not qualified. I don't know that I would try to hit the one ball. I would so. jump it is what I would do. 
I don't think I would kick at it, but nice so hit. That does bring up, I don't know that I've seen Melinda with a jump cue. I've only um, seen I have one. not seen Tanya. I've only seen one player jump the entire two days. Yep. It was Rebecca Wagner. I know, I'm pretty sure Asia knows how. I don't think I've ever seen Asia jump, no, ever. No, maybe not then. She's yeah, such Rebecca a good kicker. Wagner I did see. I, I don't... have seen Melinda jump before, but not a lot. Copy that, Christina Gonzalez on the wording. Yeah, maybe I'll just be a mercenary at BCAs. <laughs> Go to the highest bidder for 40 bucks. I figured you're going to be on the what? same team as you were last year. We can't, no. Oh, no? Tim Harris said Melinda did jump Saturday on table six. Oh, okay. Because that one ball you were asking, like, it was a pretty clean jump. So I, but... I don't jump at all. I have a jump cue that I haven't even broken out or learned how to use because I don't have the time right now. And inevitably, I get in a match, and there's usually one or two shots that I'm like, oh, this would be so easy if I knew how to jump. Jumping's like any other part of the game. you got to practice it. <laughs> She's got a good angle on the two to play it one rail with right English to come back on the three. She's going to watch out for the side pocket. She didn't hit it hard enough. So now she's in a she precarious position. She might have a look at the side of it, but... No, she doesn't have any look at it. Look right here. Oh, okay. So now she's got the side pocket in the way of a kick unless she throws English in it. She could come off the top rail and try to miss a seven, which is a risky shot. But she could go two rails around the nine, which is probably how I would come at it. But either way, she's in a bad position right now. If she just hit a little harder, it would be better. But that's pull. So I think we have a uh, recommended race chart for next year. It's a good hit on the three. That was a good hit. She's, she's left Tanya the three in the side. and Look, no matter what race chart you put out, mm. people are going to get bad. I know they are, but... For a tournament that was, quote-unquote, so geared towards lower players, you've got the fourth highest Fargo in the right. finals right. winning. Yep. So it just happened to be with the way the bracket panned out that not Asia, Rebecca, and Melinda could all play. You know, right. they're on the one side of the bracket. So it's uh, people well, are gonna we'll, be mad we'll no matter see what, what happens. We're we're playing around with a couple ideas, and we actually we may not be the ones running this next year. So we'll have to see what goes on. I definitely won't be the one running the stream next year, <laughs> much to the happiness of many people involved. And you can take your, you can lose your venom somewhere else because I definitely will Has not it been be. A rough, rough weekend on you? No, yeah. not okay. at all. Okay. Not okay. at all. And everybody's been happy. I'm having a good time. I like it. It's fun. Not too many trolls. <laughs> Mostly friendly <laughs> trolls online from friends. <laughs> but sometimes people will get on. They don't know you and what this is all about. <laughs> I'm not trying to audition for Matchroom Pool here. <laughs> all right. Good opportunity for Melinda here. Although not an easy way to get on this six. She could try to bounce between. She'd really have to stroke it between the seven and the eight, but then the nine's in the way. Or she has to stroke it and come one rail back for the six. This is actually a pretty challenging position to be in because of that nine ball. Well, and she's yeah, she's straight on the straight on the five, so even if she uses She's not straight. Look at her angle here. I just got a little bit. Okay. So she could hit it hard and come between the seven and the eight, but then the nine's in the way. She can't hit it full and try to play it one rail back for the six because the seven's in the way. Right. She can't use stun because the eight's in the way. So she could stroke it hard, come between the nine and the side pocket, and come back for the six. 
honestly, she might consider just making this five and either and setting up a bank on the six or some sort of safety. It's it's a tough position to be in. Oh, she That's hit it good. good. good she stroke. hit it good. Right in between and came above. That was a great shot. Christina Gonzalez, copy that. Thank you very much. I'll talk to Lisa. Did she just say you would be horrible as a sub? No, she said, but if you, you're a sub, she spelled your wrong. <laughs> if you're a sub, you, you would be horrible unless you play on a team with all players that are higher than you. Oh, and she scratched. Oh, yikes. I don't know what that means. Some kind of insult from Christina, which I probably deserved. That is a tough, tough, tough role. And I would think that Tanya is probably a favorite to get out here. Not a high favorite. But all she's got to do is hit this and give herself a little angle on the eight. Which she has. Play this with a little either stun to come up for the nine or a little right English. Well done. A little further than she wanted, but she's right. got a shot she can make. Tough shot. Let's uh, see how she does with it. That's a tough shot. No, she didn't leave it easy, though. No. Yeah, Didi Caballo makes a good point. Not many top players today. Usually more players from Arizona and Texas and New Mexico. But I think there's only f five players over 500 in the field. I think so. Nice oh, shot. Nice, nice shot by Melinda. Well done. So I know we didn't get a lot of players from Arizona. Um, they had their, their tour. The women's tour. Well, the women's tour is here next week, and they had their regular 625 and under tour. Which they this got a weekend. lot of players for. Yeah, I think it was over over 100, 160, I believe, was were signed up. And after all the no shows, I think it was 140 something left. 142. Yep. So, so we kind of assumed that that's where the majority of the Arizona players were. Um, Ray Evans Taylor Faith came out. assumption. Yeah. Melinda and Yvette came from California. Keith from New Mexico. We actually had quite a few girls this year that had not played in any um, singles tournaments before. So that, I always like seeing that. I like them coming out and getting started in their tournament. Um, journey there and actually crystal gallegos was one of them she ended up finishing fifth sixth so that was great mm, for her but that's not true she plays in plenty of singles tournaments well she plays in the when i say singles tournaments i mean in this this type of field she yes she plays in the putters tournaments and things like that i think she's played in a couple of apa tournaments but this is a little bit of a different different kind of animal she played well today Nice shot from Melinda. She got past the nine. She can cut the two in. But if she does that, she's going to have a hard time getting on the three. She could bank the two and stun it for the three, but that three might not go past the side pocket in the low left corner. Oh, 
Constantine is rearranging furniture. You should have been. It came through <laughs> loud and clear on the stream. <laughs> da ding. <laughs> oh, she went for the cut. And he did. And she, if she'd hit it harder, she would have. Oof. She would have made the nine. She should have hit it harder. <laughs> I tried rearranging your camera several times today, so. This might sound crazy. And I know that Tanya's not going to do this, but I would shoot the two in the corner and come back and ride the nine because if you miss, you'll be on the three. Right. But that's me and I'm nuts and I don't win. <laughs> so <laughs> there's, there's all kinds of factors involved. Uh, she hit that too hard. I think she could see the three, but. You, you have been the uh, bridesmaid of qualifiers this last year. I won one. <laughs> Did you take second in it, though? No, the Moby Dick qualifier. I won all the way to the hot seat. And um, then Ryan Buist had to come through the loser side because we drew each other the first round. Oh. Tanya got lucky here. Missed the three ball, but left the cue ball behind the six. Incidentally, that's another thing I noticed with the carbon fiber shafts. They are harder to catch English off the rails because they're just they come off more powerful. But right. Like Do on you this use shot, carbon fiber? Or you? I used to for eight for eight months. I did. Yeah. I got a nice Q-Tech Synergy fitted to my Sean perfectly, but I went back to just straight maple. I have a low deflection Sean. That was a. I don't know. I think it was a good hit. But I don't know. Well, neither uh, one of them are questioning it. Yeah. And Jack didn't say anything. I know he, earlier today he did call a hit foul from, from yeah. his seat. So. so I made the decision to go back to Maple. And then I just said, I'm going to stick with it. I'm not going to switch around. And when Joe Klimchak was changing a tip, I pulled out my hybrid shaft and I was making everything. Right. And I'm like, I'm taking this out of my bag. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to have to question but I have a, it's for, it's preference. There's things you can do with a carbon fiber you can't with a maple and vice versa. <laughs> Ryan Buist said, <laughs> whoever finished higher in the Moby Dick would have won the qualifier. Hey, whoa, that's you, buddy. <laughs> that's you. Oh, Miss Q. Jeff Gray, I can't respond to that comment on the stream. <laughs> he just deleted it. Oh, no, he didn't delete it. <laughs> it's only a matter of time before somebody does that. <laughs> just points at the way of the world. Right. Well, Ray Man was threatening to this year, so. This isn't a bad, this sounds crazy, but it's actually not. This isn't a bad opportunity to thin the four and come back for the nine. And she might actually be looking at that. No, she's not. No, she is. She yeah. is, yep. Nice shot. Yeah, good shot. She just hit it a different way than I would have. Yeah. She played a follow shot, but she got some snaps from her opponent. Yep, yeah, good shot. So that is not a topic I wanted to address on stream, but yeah, it is only a matter of time before. Like, really... Whoa, the mics are on right now. So tell me to turn the mics no. off before you. <laughs> 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 Never mind. If you don't want to we'll, discuss something we'll, on the we'll stream, talk later. tell me to turn the mics <laughs> off. <laughs> Jeff, no. Oh, man, Jeff, stop.
two, one. Okay. That was a beautiful shot from Melinda, Mr. Smith. If that's who you really are. <laughs> Rodeo Amanda, what's up? <laughs> Amanda from Arizona. Why aren't you up here? Oh, yeah, because you've got a great pool scene in Arizona <laughs> where you have a million tournaments and options and players. Okay, fine. Fine, Rodeo Amanda. Have it your way. I keep a close eye on Arizona. I like. I try to get down there at least once a quarter. Yeah. And uh, give it a shot. Let's check in on Steve Bergen. See how he's doing. I did watch his stream earlier today. It's playing right now against Lee Brown. Whatever the case, he's guaranteed third place, which is awesome. That's nice. Steve's such a nice guy. I'm going to tell him uh, dinner is on him this next week. I'm going to tell him since he did so well in the tournament, he should pull out of the Dock Hill. Oh, no. that That's not going to happen. Why not? He doesn't want to give us all chances. And Melinda rattles the one. The Dock Hill's winter breaks, right? You're asking the wrong person there. I th I think it is. I'm not 100% sure, though. I'm pretty sure it is. For those of you who don't know, who's probably nobody, the Dock Hill is coming up on the 11th through the 13th here at Rum Runner. Should be fun. There's no, the one ball goes here, but shape on the two is tough. I know you're getting tired of me saying this, but I'm taking a flyer here. Okay, so, so we are, first of all, Didi, it's never a hassle. I know you're much love so i appreciate it so we're back on rum runner wi-fi i apologize for the back and forth my hotspot company just told me no more so if, I, if rum runner goes dead again we're gonna have to tether off rebecca's okay. so it'll have to be fast i would just be ready got it so give me your password you can turn it off for now i think Rum Runner looks too, looks good. Yeah, my mobile hotspot is slowed to a maximum of 128 kilobytes. Oh, it's used... called throttling. Oh, my goodness. Until the 16th of March. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm at 80% on my hotspot, but mine resets on the 11th of March. So yeah. mine will reset in time for the dock hill. <laughs> mine won't. I'll ha I might have to bring a, a Reno's hotspot or something. We'll figure it out. He's got one of those. My friend who owns a food truck's got one. We'll figure it out. Nice shot. Well, I think... By then, Jack will have his new T-Mobile one, too, so he'll we'll have a couple options here. That song from Con Air is playing. So I don't know if Jack, when he was in here, mentioned that um, obviously 
it's been mentioned several times throughout the week and that this is a charity tournament for Helen J. Stewart School for the Mentally and Physically Challenged. Um, with the raffle, the Southwest Q, the 10% from the Calcutta that Gino matched, and the uh, $10 from the entry fees we raised um, $4,100 for the school. So that's, that's, awesome. that's really a good, good thing. Forty one hundred bucks mm -hmm. race for the children. The Helen J. Stewart School for the Mentally and Physically Challenged Children. That's awesome. Oh, the, this event was always near and I mean it's near and dear to Gino, but also to his brother Gordy. This was mm -hmm. his big his big contribution. So we're we're extremely glad that we were able to to raise that much money for them. One of our listeners has sent me the flyer from the Dock Hill. Winter breaks. Texas Express rules. So that means free file would be included. Would or wouldn't? Would. Yeah. That's Texas Express rules. I think Jack said he's pretty sure that free file is in the dock. I mean, that's it says it right there. That's Texas Express rules. So Melinda should be out here. That was a pretty shot on the eight. Leaves a fairly easy shot on the nine here to put her up six to one. I'm really impressed with how Melinda's played this she's, whole tournament. She's done very well. She's not giving a lot of opportunities. She's gotten a couple rolls here or there, but nothing out of the ordinary. Nope. So she is on the hill. Wow, even Andy Hughes said thank you. <laughs> Love you, Andy. <laughs> so Melinda Wong is breaking for the Western Women's Charity Nine Ball Challenge Championship. So yesterday she finished off two of her two of her matches with a snap nine in the top right hand corner. Yeah, Not I saw that. On this one. <laughs> she did drop how, two. How anticlimactic! I no. know. Sorry, sorry, everybody. Thanks for nothing, Rebecca <laughs> Hendricks. Uh, and Tanya, look. She's playing her game. She's playing smart where she can. She's just she's being kept in her seat by Melinda this whole time. She has been. I mean, she's had a couple shots, but I don't know that they're necessarily easy shots. Mark Smith, I can tell you the answer to that question. It's no. You know, there wasn't even a hint of discussion. Nope. Ne neither one of them came and asked us what the payouts were, what the difference was, what, if anyone else. I mean, they, they are both just so focused on what they are doing in this game. I'm happy I met Tanya today. She's such a bubbly and wonderful personality. She is. She's been shooting great. She's, she's great for the game of pool and um, just a great person. I'm happy I met her. Reigning champion Frisbee Carol Frisbee is here. Well, she's not the she's a former champion, not the reigning. Oh, champion. who's the reigning champion? Asia Gray is the reigning champion. Oh. So two, the last time this was held in twenty twenty, right? She's gonna take a flyer COVID. here. Oh, <laughs> Constantine shot. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Asia, Asia, and uh, Lila. Landers played the finals of okay. the 2020 Western Women's. <laughs> Jason Kane, you just see him commenting in, in British. He's taking a flyer. 
<laughs> I always hear uh, what what every time I see Jason comment, I picture it sounding like um, Ozzy Man reviews. On oh Facebook. yeah. <laughs> Take a look at what we have here. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good. Scene. Have a look at this cheeky crow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good safe by Melinda. It was a great shot. Um, look up the one where the, the, the crow, officiates a match between the two cats fighting. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like a referee. Oh, he's, and she he's nicked lost it. his mind. Good hit by Tanya. That was a great shot by Tanya. That was a great shot. And a very important shot because Melinda could have chopped up this rack and done all kinds of things. But now she's shooting along too. That was a great shot by Tanya. With the way this rack is laid out, a 4-9 makes a lot of sense here to try to combo it. Does the 4-9 go? It goes. She's going to shoot the 4 6 instead. It was great. I would think the 8 9 would be the easier easier to get back for. I don't think the 8 9 is wired. In fact, I'm fairly certain it's not wired. I'll oh, tell you what, this nine different. is going towards the pocket, <laughs> guaranteed. She can carry it off the eight. It goes. It's no gimme. It's not easy, but I, I'd bet, I'd bet my bottom dollar. Well, Melinda might play safe here. That's a risky shot with the four nine because she could leave it hanging. But the four is going to come up. It's a two way shot. The four is going to come up right. table. If it goes. I mean, I'm staring down the barrel. It looks like it goes here. So I'm on a little angle, so I'm, I don't have but the I don't, view that you do. I don't know if she can hit the four in a way that gets to nine to the eight in the way it goes, but I think she can. And the four would go up table, and she could even try to play exactly the cue ball. Do. She's going to come behind. Oh, oh, no, she played safety. safe. Not a great one either. Should have gone for the flyer. That's more Arnold Schwarzenegger than Ozzy, man. Safe that, play, that was though. Arnold Schwarzenegger? Is that what that was? Something like that. But let me tell you this. Tanya has a bank into the nine. It's not a, a great shot, but she might. I don't think she's going to try it, though. No. Wow. Oh, boy. Well, the eight nine definitely isn't wired now. What do you think? If you're Melinda, are you having the shot watched? I don't think so. I think five is She's out not enough. going for a carom. I probably would get a better angle for myself to watch it. Doesn't matter. Tanya's calling for the shot to be watched. Yeah. I think Tanya is probably going to go for a bank here. Which I don't. I don't have an angle enough to see what I would do here. She let her rip. Where is each? Well, she went for it. Look, she's she's not going to go home saying she didn't try, no, right? No, not at all. There's one thing she's definitely not going to do is not going to be like, well, I didn't try to shoot or I didn't no. take a shot. So these three balls are the only thing separating Melinda Huang from the 2022 12th Annual Western Women's Charity Challenge nine ball, benefiting Helen J. Stewart School for the Mentally and Physically Challenged. Tanya Klein has had a great tournament. She's played great. She's been a great breath of fresh air. She's been happy. Um, Melinda Huang has just been a really strong player and played smart pool. She's really had to grind out some she matches. She hit this perfect. 
Beautiful shot. I mean, just perfect. And she is straight on. Well, as straight on as she possibly could be on that eight ball. It's yeah. That's let's a just good lead. let's just see what happens here. And straight in the nine. Congratulations to Melinda. This is I have she to played go great. Help with payout envelopes. So, thank you everybody for watching. All right, everybody. Thanks it. for watching. Appreciate it. Thank you for all the good comments. I really appreciate it. We enjoy doing this here at Papa C Productions. We enjoy being part of events like this. It's a great event for charity. Thanks to Jack Murray, Rebecca Hendricks. Thanks to all the players involved. Thanks to Rum Runner, Gino Hill. Everybody involved in the tournament from the beginning to end. Thanks to Ryan DeBerg for running to Calcutta. Thanks to everybody. Special thanks to Tanya Klein as the runner-up and Melinda Wong for giving us a great show, playing great pool. But thank you to everybody. And uh, we will see you around the Doc Hill Memorial Tournaments on the 11th through 13th. We'll be running some sort of stream. I'm not sure how I'll be involved because I'm playing in it, but we'll be doing something. And then the Andy Mercer Memorial Tournament, the big one, will be on the 18th through 20th. I'll definitely be running the stream for that. And it'll be a good time. And uh, thanks, everybody. We're out.